It's John Myers and the lovely Caroline uh, with you for the next couple of hours. And we're joined in the studio today uh, by a Cumbrian great in terms mm. of the music. And uh, he's called, of course, Buzz Elliott and uh, runs Workington Music Store. And we're talking about the music of the 70s, the local bands of the 70s. Uh, welcome to the studio. It's good to see you, Buzz. Not, you haven't changed a day. <laughs> uh, hello, John. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Caroline. How's Buzz, going? great to have you. By the way, with that name, you kind of had to be a musician, didn't you? Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, it's a bit of it stands out, doesn't it, Buzz? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually my older older brother's nickname, and, and I sort of uh, ended up adopting it. Really, I see. So he doesn't get called Buzz anymore. So he doesn't get called Buzz. No, no. Now the seventies. I have to say, the seventies were full of great bands, but they were mostly like disco and uh, the times of uh, you know, or you could say the the real pop music used to come in. Uh, what sort of music were you playing? Uh, we were all so me and my friends were all more into the sort of rock scene, and uh, we like the heavy rock. Sort of bands like Black Sabbath, Atomic Rooster, stuff like that. And um, I'm also a big fan of uh, the sort of prog scene, bands like Genesis and Yes and Gentle Giant. Well, you played you played at the time in a band called uh, 8 Hertz. 8 Hertz, uh, How yeah. did you get that name? How did you get 8 Hertz? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I, I don't know if I actually repeat this on air. You know, it sounds rude. <laughs> um, it's, I can tell you, it's, it's, uh, 8 Hertz is a frequency that is so low that if, if you would experience this certain frequency, that certain things might happen to your body. <laughs> and the, uh, the, best okay. play, the best player was an electrical buffin, and he, he, um, he'd read this somewhere, and he, and he decided this was the name for the band. Well, there's a, lot of so famous <laughs> local, there's a lot of famous local bands around, wasn't there, at the time, uh, all doing various things around, around Cumbria, and you were one of them, of course, with 8 Hertz, uh, and then Hammerhead, and various others. Uh, but what, what sort of um, inspired you to get into all of this? Um... Ever since the age of about nine, I've only really been interested in, in playing guitar, learning guitar. That's I was more interested in that than my skill work, to be honest. <laughs> well, I've got a clip of you uh, on Eight Hertz, and um, for the for the listeners who've never heard of Eight Hertz, this is what you were missing. Great times there, oh, eh? Yeah, Great times. Spaced out. <laughs> where, where were the places to go in Cumbria for uh, for a good night out to see local bands? The best place, really, in the seventies was to go down to um, it's now it's now the Union Jack Club, but back then it was called the Matador, and the Matador was the in place every uh, Friday and Saturday, um, mainly to see the band Nerves. Nerves were the best local band, really. They they play a lot of their own material, which was all very proggy, and um, the covers they played were superb, you know. Excellent musicianship in the band. And how do you think the local bands are now then? How do you think they've progressed across the whole of Cumbria over the 40 years? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of people still, still think we're in the, living in the past in the 70s. There's a, a guy I talked to recently who moved up from down south and he can't understand why we're all living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with living in the past, you know. No, no. <laughs> No, I really like that. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, yeah, I really that um, your eight hertz. That was great. But you didn't. You you moved on from eight hertz. You sort of developed your sound a little bit. And you went for, uh, for well, a different I, style. I think we've got to be better. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. That yeah. was great. Yeah, we're all uh, although we're all getting older. You know, it's a lot more experience, so we can all we can all play a bit better. And um, the band Hammerhead, we still exist. We're going back in the studio soon to write new, new material. And um, so you're still going. Still going. Yeah, we've got two albums out. Hopefully, another one out next year. Well, I, I hope, uh, listen, congratulations, I hope that all works for you. Because you're on a music store. Do you, do you sell records in those music stores now? Yeah, well, there's still, um, we didn't do a vinyl at first, but we've found that uh, there's still uh, a big interest in, in vinyl, uh, second-hand vinyl stuff, as long as it's in good condition. And, um... You, you see, that, see, that annoys me, you see, Caroline, because I had about, um, as I went through my disco years, I had about 20,000 copies of vinyl, and when it all went to uh, CD, I chucked them out. Oh, no. Yeah, It'd be, worth a, be worth a fortune now, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, so, some of the albums now just, I mean, I, I, sold, I sold a whole collection of about four or 500 for about £100. Pound. Um... If you were to buy them back now, you just you spend ten times more than that to to buy them all back. You know, it's um, I don't know. It's um, to me, vinyl is is the uh, format that won't go away. It's the it's format that I think you're absolutely <laughs> right. I wish I'd kept them. I blame my Linda for forcing me to throw them out of the house. Um, so, if you if a band was starting today, what would you what advice would you give them today about in the music scene and wanting to last as long as you have? Well, the one thing I always say to anybody is um, you've got to write your own material. 
and uh, you know you've got to you've got to play with conviction, play from the heart, uh, and if you do that, hopefully you'll find a, a fan base out there of uh, people that might, you know, like the stuff you're doing. It's hard work because you've got to go out gigging and playing and promote your own stuff. Most of the work we ever do with with Hammerhead, we never make any money, but we out we're out there promoting. But you're enjoying stuff. it. Yeah, yeah. There's a few little record labels overseas that that got interested in us and, and release our stuff. So there's like you know. Um, like a few thousand records out there, okay. CDs and stuff like that. But you, you know? never know, one day, I always thought the big thrill of a band, one day you might walk into a bar somewhere in the world and you, one of your songs may be on. That might be the biggest thrill of the world, eh? Well, that's happened before. I walked into the Night's Head once in Workington and uh, I'm standing at the jukebox and Time Will Tell came on, that was our big single. <laughs> you thought, wow, I've made it. <laughs> well, you know, they, everybody thought I'd put it on. <laughs> 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 Adam really. Gordon, <laughs> hey, Buzz, great to see you. <laughs> and uh, and thanks for coming in and sharing your moments with us. OK, cheers. Real pleasure to see you. I'm